of the biggest things about building a cafe racer is converting that tail section and installing the tail light. But where the heck do you put the wiring? One of the biggest problems I've had is every single time I take the seat off, I forget about the wiring and I'm pulling it out of the connection and it's driving me nuts. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to make it wireless. Let's get into it. Two things that I have to do on this CB750 is one, the paint, and two, the upholstery. And neither of those two can get done until I install the tail light. So finding the right connection or component to make this tail light wireless has been more of a challenge than I first thought. I've spent hours and hours so far online just searching and searching to try and find that right path and I think I may have found it but I'm not 100%. So I purchased this part and now it's just a waiting game for it to turn up. Uh, it's going to be here in probably about four days to a week. So while we're waiting for that to turn up, let's try and figure out how to install this tail light. So the little marks down the center of the hump there are actually the split mold join, and that is not the center of the hump. Uh, so this is very misleading and it's kind of putting me off a little bit, so I'm going to get a second measurement with a laser level to try and get an exact measurement of this. The center of the keyhole there, and it's pretty much right exactly where I need it to be. Comparing it to the old one, it definitely sits over way too far. This original line looks better. This is extremely deceiving, but it's something that I want to spend a bit of time in getting right. So let's assume that these two shocks are perfectly in the right spot. Let's measure the center between the two and go from that point out, see what we get there. So this has now given us three marks. The pencil mark was the first one, the blue one, the second one, and the red one. The red one's probably the most accurate due to the fact the way I've done it. I think I'm gonna use the red one, and when I stand back, I think the red one looks more like it's in line. This bit here is actually five millimeters that way. So I think that looks about right to me. So we'll go with the red one, and hopefully things work out okay. <laughs> So the postman's turned up and I've already opened the package to have a look at it. Wait till you see what I got. So I ordered two of these clips in case I have to modify one and it, the modification didn't work. And what ended up turning up was this. And that is not what I ordered at all. So I'm gonna contact them and hopefully they can give me a refund. And uh... So now going back to the drawing board, after thinking about this for a little bit longer, I'm just pretty much sure that I'm going to change the way I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back online and I'm going to have a look, search and see if I can find something else. So as it happens, I ended up cutting it in the wrong place anyway. After all that measuring and even with this laser guide, I still managed to cut it in the wrong place. I stood back after I'd cut the hole and I was looking at it going, that doesn't look in the center. And I've been looking at it for so long, I ended up uh, going more one side than the other but it's the wrong side so uh, I'm gonna have to try and figure out how to fill it up with some fiberglass hopefully. So what I've done is I've given it a light coat of white paint and then I use the laser as my guide and I run a bit of pinstriping down the center. So now you can see that this is completely in the wrong spot it is way too far on one side it's about five mil out so what I'm gonna do is see if I can fill it up and then wait till that dries and then hopefully recut the hole perfectly in the center. One of the worst parts about building is having to wait for parts. So I paid for Express Post to get this as quick as I could. And this is what I got. Uh, they're these little guys here and they're like spring loaded. So I'm not sure how this is going to work because they're a lot taller than I first imagined. So uh, they didn't have a drawing to show me the size, but hopefully they do fit. Let's see if we can figure out a way to get these in there.
time of day. It's coffee time, cheers. So this is three mil thick steel and what I'm doing here is I'm just tapping a thread through it just so that I can put bolts straight through without having to have a nut underneath. So generally after I tap a hole I'll run the countersink on both sides if I can get to both sides of the hole. So the best thing to protect everything when you're welding is usually a big piece of leather but not everybody has that. But what's relatively cheap is a fire blanket and if you can double it up it will add some sort of protection but it's not perfect so things will burn through if you're not careful. To get this in the perfect location all I'm using is a piece of flat bar straight across the frame and then a spacer between the new bracket that I'm welding on and the flat bar. Well, it's definitely not going to fall out in a hurry. It's a really tight tolerance to get it in there to sort of wiggle it in. But that's what I wanted exactly in the center now. So I'm really stoked with that. Now I can go off and uh, work on something else. What I'm looking for is something to use that I can mount on the underside of the seat to work as a contact on the other side of that connection. There's some thin flat brass. I actually don't have any, I don't think, so I'm gonna to have to probably make some flat washes out of some brass rod. actually working on now is a bit of plastic, a high density polyethylene plastic. It is going to be the backing piece for the two little brass washers that I have. It'll look a lot neater doing it this way than just screwing those two little brass washers to the underside of the seat. So keep in mind that one of these guys is going to be your positive, so therefore just treat it like your battery terminal. Don't put anything metal across the top. You could put a little plastic cover that slides across and covers it uh, when the seat comes off. That's one option. Like I'm not too worried about it with this bike because it is wired up with the motor gadget SMO unit and if it does detect the short, then it'll just shut that circuit down until I restart the bike. So not too worried about it here, but just keep it in mind. So I'm temporarily wiring this one just for now, but I do have this really good idea given to me by my good friend Willis, who said to me, why don't you run some ribbon wire through the fiberglass, as in just put it in the fiberglass, pour some resin over the top of it, and that way it will seal it in there completely, and all you need to do is solder the ends where the connections are, which is a great idea. I don't have any ribbon wire. I could do that same thing with just using, I guess, a little bit of normal wire and then just take the insulation off. But I think I want to try this with some ribbon wire, so when I get some, I'll try that. But for now, this will do the job and it'll give us a bit of a test to see if it's gonna work. Okay, so I'm all ready to roll. I've got the seat on, I've got the battery connected to the jump pack because the battery is flat. Let's give it a go and let's hope it works. First up, I'm gonna turn the lights on. Yes. And then, hell yeah. So I've got a little bit of a weight here. So if I take the weight off, which is taking the weight off the seat, how cool is that? <laughs> I love it. Yes. I quickly interrupt here. The flashing of the tail light is actually caused by a setting inside the Mo unit you can select. It's got nothing to do with the connection. So all I have to do to get rid of the weight to make it work is just bend that front bracket and that'll push down and make sure it's pushing down on those two pins. Mo ride ready. Hell yeah. The battery is very low. So 
you're not going to be seeing much, but it works. Lift the seat up. Hey, <laughs> cool. So where I place the two pins is directly where you would put the weight on the seat. So therefore it can never disconnect. The only thing that possibly could happen is if the seat was to move, then therefore it would disconnect. This seat is such a tight tolerance, the same with the other one. There's a location pin at the back which will stop it from moving forwards and backwards. And it is so damn tight in here to, there's no movement whatsoever. I will give it a thorough test, but for now, that is a win. If you've been thinking about rewiring your bike at all, I did a full review on the Motor Gadgets Mo Unit Blue to show you what it can actually do when I installed it on this bike. It's a really good video, highly recommend it. I'll leave it right here for you.